Now, my normal gauge for how much I've enjoyed a Disney movie is based on how many tears I shed throughout its runtime. Each little droplet that trinkles off the end of my nose is worth a single point, and the grand total of microscopic puddles that sit on the theatre floor when the credits roll gives the film its final score. So on that note, Moana gets a 497 out of 10. And don't stress, I know what you're thinking. That is a ridiculous number. But I'd like to clarify that I did stop counting after the first five minutes, when the tears formed in oceans as large as the one featured so heavily in the movie. It's not even sad. It's just lovely. It's bloody lovely, in fact, as me mum would say. It's such a likeable flick that if it were a person, I'd want to cuddle it as tightly as a socially awkward teenager would hug his very underage-looking anime pillow. Moana is a fine-ass Disney movie. It tells the tale of a young girl's adventure with a demigod to save the world from a terrible corruption, and at first glance, it's pretty by the numbers. You got your new Disney princess with the big eyes that psychologically manipulate you into falling in love with the film, you got your singing, you got your dancing, you got your comic relief's animal sidekick for the little ones, but it does a lot of subtle things in a very refreshing way. Firstly, no love story. Holy shit balls. Disney made a film with a female lead and ain't a single Prince Charming kicking about the gaff. Now I know they have been trying to distance themselves from this trope as of recent anyway. Just look at this horrible little twat badger for proof of that. Look at you, you smarmy prick. Giving a bad name to gingers everywhere. I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you! But even Frozen, which featured a dissection of this cliché, still couldn't resist slipping in a romance, so it's nice to get a film like this where no such relationship exists. Second, we're seeing a depiction of a Polynesian setting, which doesn't really ever get explored that much in cinema. Especially not in a way that sort of shows the cultural history, which is a shame because it's super interesting and filled with legends rife for adaptation. Yet if you google Polynesian films, you get suggested Donovan's Reef, which is mostly just about John Wayne dicking around in Hawaii for a bit, and by today's standards is a bit, uh, what's the word? Rapey, that's it. And thirdly, it is fantastically written, and I don't mean like it's got snappy dialogue, although it does, or that its plot's a lot of fun, although that is also true, or that the songs are catchier than syphilis, even though they are. But rather, I mean that it's just really well constructed, and it knows how to tell a story, because if you look at the actual plot, it's nothing worth shouting home about. People must take a thing to another thing, or else a really bad thing will happen. That could just as much describe Lord of the Rings Ring, Guardians of the Galaxy's Infinity Stone, or the memories in Inside Out. Now, they're all exceptionally good and drastically different movies, but the point is that the reason they manage to tell drastically different stories despite the same basic core is because they play to the strengths of their characters and the world they populate. Moana also achieves this brilliantly. Let me tangentially explain something real quick. People, I think, often get confused sometimes between plot and story. The way I see it, plot is a series of directions. Plot is the points on a map where things happen. Plot is characters go here, they pick up this item, they fight these people. Story is different. Story is what the film is about. If I ask you what The Lord of the Rings is about, the answer is not chucking a ring into a volcano. It's about camaraderie, love, war, good, evil. You know, the list goes on. Inside Out isn't about cutesy characters returning a small glowing ball to some kid's brain. It's about growing up. Guardians of the Galaxy isn't about superheroes, it's about friendship. That's the story. And the reason these movies succeed in telling these tales is because they understand that the plot is, to an extent, basically background noise. It's merely a vehicle to tell the story. Moana is about overcoming insecurity, self-identity, and nature. It's about its characters and the journey they go on emotionally as much as it is about the actual literal journey across the ocean. Moana is more than just the type you protagonist. She's a definitive example of how to write a bloody fantastic lead. She's competent, so you never feel like she's useless, but she's not so overly skilled at what she does that she isn't prone to failure. In fact, Moana fails a lot in this movie. For being the supposed chosen one who will save her island from utter extinction, this lass has a habit of falling flat on her face. Aye, she might fix a roof in one scene, but then in the next one she's all like, I'm gonna sail out in the ocean and catch a load of fish, the ocean replies, Ho, oh, you're fucking not, love! Smashes her boat about, 
slams her into the seabed and sees her crushed temporarily between the waves and trapped in coral, almost causing her to drown. This character earns her every success and failure. When she's able to sail properly, it's because she fucked up, got some help, and then bloody well learned to do it right. That's a real hero. Great heroes are a balance between positive qualities and flaws, just like real people. And Moana is a perfect example. Emotionally articulate, but headstrong. Determined, but occasionally overconfident. Enthusiastic, but unsure of herself. Her character is of course aided immeasurably by the absolutely outstanding performance from newcomer Auli Cravajo. Holy shit, this woman is going to be a goddamn superstar. For her first feature, she demonstrates an incredibly diverse range of emotion through her voice and that would probably be enough to make her successful anyway, but then you hear her singing and it's like, bloody hell lass, you want to stop nicking all the talent in the world and making the rest of the universe look bad, eh? She's accompanied by an equally excellent performance from the Dwayne Johnson Rock in the finest work of his career since WrestleMania 17. Who knew The Rock could sing? I heard people cry out as they left the cinema, to which I say, those of us that listened to his original song about pie on WWF The Music Volume 5, you fucking philistines! Maui is an equally brilliantly flawed character. In fact, the whole problem the heroes have to solve is actually one caused by his rash decisions. Yet, even when presented with the criminality and repercussions of his actions, his ego and insecurity forces him into the genuine belief that he was in the right, which sets him up as the perfect counterbalance to Moana's flaws. Where he's more physically capable, he's far less emotionally articulate and responsible, and the two bring out the best in each other, bouncing dynamically in organic feeling arcs that start with the fantastic setup of two very flawed people on a mission they aren't equipped to deal with, and ends with brilliant catharsis. All the while echoing the adventuring atmosphere of Zelda's The Wind Waker and the epic scale of Shadow of the Colossus as it explores some big ideas in a narrative that's fun for kids and adults while being consistently funny to boot. Now I could end the review there because let's face it, this shit has already gotten my heartiest of recommendations so it's pretty clear that I'm saying to go see this thing but it would be absolutely criminal to not talk about how brilliant the music is and more importantly the way it's used in the film. And while none of the songs will probably have as much mass appeal outside the context of the contained narrative of the movie as say the initially excellent Let It Go did from Frozen, they're still worth talking about. Partly because the songs here are arguably used more smartly in the narrative, and partly because I can still talk about them without wallowing in despair, as unlike Frozen's Let It Go, these songs are yet to result in a nightmarish and everlasting hell of a continuous unending barrage of repeated blastings always accompanied by the dull set tones of the nearest screaming 12 year old. <laughs> So yeah, basically I want to talk about the music before I finish, however unfortunately I can't do that without ganning into somewhat spoiler territory, so close the review right now if you don't want the spoilers coming in 3, 2, 1. So Moana is the absolute Lord Emperor of the leitmotif, which is a technique where a recurring piece of music is used to represent a character, action or theme and elicit an emotional response. On my second and third viewing of the film, yes I've seen it three times already, don't fucking judge me, I noticed I was more emotionally affected by an amazing early opening segment where baby Moana plays with the ocean. The scene contains no dialogue and is just beautiful visuals paired with subtle instruments and talk allowing vocals. It's only later that I realised that the reason it pulled my heartstrings harder on the second viewing was because I knew what was coming. This music directly ties into the film's finale where the serene image of the water becomes contrasted with the violent and aggressive imagery of a marching monster. But the film kind of pairs your understanding of the serenity of this early scene to tell you in the final moments that everything's going to be okay through its repeated music making a climax that could have came off as intense or scary so really beautiful through careful planning. And that's just one example. Leitmotifs are everywhere in this film and not once do they fail to elicit an emotional response. The ancestor song We Know The Way, written in Tokelauan, is already really impressive considering only about 1600 people still speak in that language, but becomes even more moving when it comes back into play as Moana journeys across the sea and follows in their footsteps. Aye, they knew the way alright. The way right into my heart. The absolute best moment of storytelling and use of the leitmotif though comes through the song How Far I'll Go, an absolute belter of a tune that made me want to run to my local beach and swim freely in its waters before I remembered it looks like this.
The song is repeated several times throughout the film, each time slightly different to the last with new lyrics and instruments. The first sees it quite strong and build into a big crescendo, the second an even bigger crescendo. Each time the song is repeated it feels bigger, better, more powerful and more important than the last. Until one moment, the best scene in the movie. When Moana is at her lowest point, Maui has left her, she's out on the ocean by herself in the dock, she has nothing. Her grandmother's spirit then asks her, who are you? A recurring theme of the movie being self-identity as Moana struggles to find herself and her place in her society. This is when the music isn't just used to elicit an emotional reaction, it's when it becomes part of the story. Once again we hear the main tune from How Far I'll Go, but this time it starts barely audible. Just as Moana right now has nothing and must build herself back up from scratch, so too must the song. It starts with barely any instruments, but it builds, all the way from nothing, just like our hero. And not only that, it brings in elements from the Ancestors song, combining multiple motifs into the biggest crescendo of all as the protagonist proudly screams at the top of her lungs, I am Moana. And let's not forget this all takes place during a moment where Moana has just realised she isn't the chosen one in a fantastic teardown of the destiny trope, which is a pet peeve of mine, when she decides, fuck it! It doesn't matter that I'm not the chosen one. I don't care that I wasn't destined to save the day. It doesn't matter that it isn't my fate to save my island because I'm fucking Moana and I'm gonna do it anyway. You see, destiny narratives, at least to me, seem like a horrible idea unless you do something super clever. The reason being they take all responsibility away from the characters to actually achieve anything on their own. If it's your destiny to slay the evil testicle dragon that lives atop Mount Ballbag, then sure we could watch you go through two hours of trials and tribulations to struggle to that peak, but the universe has already told us it's happening regardless because you're the chosen one, it's your fate, it's your destiny. You'll achieve the same goal sitting on your ass having a bag of crisps and an occasional wank until the dragon rears its head as you would actively seeking out your pre-planned destination, so what's the point. Moana gets this though, it understands the flaw of a chosen one narrative and it's a typical scene in these stories to have the character question their destiny. Moana has this, when she thinks the adventure is too much for her she turns to the ocean and says, why did you choose me? I'm the wrong one for this, take the stone, give it to someone else. Now in a traditional narrative this would be the point where the ocean would keep giving her back the stone. It's the point where destiny says, no, no, you are the chosen one, you're the right person, hooray you, go take the MacGuffin and have a happy ending you big special protagonist you, but not here. Here the ocean just kind of goes, oh shit, yeah, sorry about that love, uh, my bad, ah, I don't know why I picked ye, that was a terrible decision. Well, this has just been a colossal waste of time and takes the stone. Amazing. Moana is not destined for greatness. The movie explicitly lies to you for three quarters of its runtime and then turns around and says, nah, she's not the chosen one. But you know what? It doesn't matter because she's something better. She's a person and anybody can achieve greatness. And while she might not be destined for it, while it might not be her fate, while it isn't part of a great big plan, she's going to go back and get that stone and save the world anyway because she can, because she's Moana. That scene, that scene right there is the whole movie. It is everything the film wants to say and more. It is an emotional climax to a meticulously constructed hour and a half long build and it is nothing short of astounding. And it all comes together in a moving symphony, the payoff to which has been building from the very first song. So, to everyone involved in crafting the music for this film, from those who played the instruments, to those who wrote the words, to those who sang them, I want to just say one thing. Fucking marry me. I, all of you, I will love you all till our dying days in wondrous polygamy. Except you, Owly, you're only 16 and that's, that, mm, that's a bit dodgy. I'm, I'm 24, you know, that's, uh, eh, let's, let's just, let's just not go there. The Rock, though, give me some of that big lad.